Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the shipwrecks and salvage option. And in particular, we'll be looking at our historical development of an understanding of electron transfer reactions. So basically, we're going to look at how scientists have influenced our knowledge of electron transfer reactions. And in particular, we'll be looking at the work of these four scientists here. So on the far side at the top is Galvani. Here is Volta. The bottom uh, side, or the bottom far side, is Humphrey Davy, which you should remember from acidic environment. And for the physics students, you should, you should recognize this guy here on the near nearest to me, uh, bottom, left -hand bottom right hand corner, and that's Michael Faraday. So these four scientists have contributed greatly to our understanding of electron transfer reactions. And so we're going to look at each of their work today and see how their work has actually influenced the progression of science and in particular electron transfer. So Luigi Galvani, uh, so he discovered the first, gen well, the first generation of electrical current. So he kind of figured out or found, discovered what electrical current was, or at least its effect on other things. So he essentially what he did was connected two wires of different metals together and attached it to a frog's leg. So basically just two wires, different metals connected together and then attached to a frog's leg. And what he found was that the muscle in the frog's leg twitched. And so he thought that, so what he thought was that the muscle was actually generating electricity, which is actually not correct, but that's what he thought at the time. Now, Alessandro Volta extended that, so he developed the first galvanic cell by alternating a piece of brine-soaked cardboard between two different metallic plates. So let's say red can be copper or something, and black could be like iron. And the dashed black will be the cardboard. So essentially that's how he built the first kind of cell. He soaked a piece of cardboard in brine, which is salt water, and he put it between two different metals and noticed that he could get some electricity out of it. Okay, and that's what we call a galvanic cell, or the first galvanic cell. And he used different um, metals and found that they have different currents and voltages and things. Uh, so he used zinc and silver, and he, we call that Volta's pile. Okay. So his main contribution to science was the construction of a usable galvanic cell, and he was the first person to actually have direct electrical current, um, so to create direct electrical current um, and know about it. So moving from Volta, we move to Humphrey Davy. So you should remember Davy from acidic environment. He thought that hydrogen had something to do with acidity. So he recognized that chemical reactions were the source of electrical current from the pile not the contact between the two different metals. So it was a chemical reaction that was happening. And he also showed various things. He showed that water was not an element by electrolyzing it into hydrogen and oxygen. So he proved that water was not an element, even though many people at the time thought it was, because it was so vital for life. He actually proved that it wasn't, um, because you could split it up into oxygen and hydrogen. So what he did, he spent a lot of time um, as a scientist, um, isolating elements. So what he did was he used electrolysis to isolate elements like magnesium, strontium, barium um, from molten compounds. So this would have been sort of like a party trick. Um, uh, aristocrats in this time would have hired scientists to go and find things so they could show off to their friends that you know, their scientist found this. Um, so this is probably what he spent most of his time doing isolating these elements for you know, aristocratic entertainment. So Davy's main contribution to science to chemistry was the introduction of electrolysis as a chemical analysis mechanism. Um, so he could decom decompose compounds into other um, elements. So while Davy was considered one of the greatest experimental scientists of all time, 
we have Michael Faraday, was it, who was his apprentice, who was considered one of the biggest, or one of the most talented theorists um, in science. So, my, uh, so Humphrey Davy could make up lots of experiments, and he was a very good. He was very good at doing experiments, but he usually didn't. Well, in this case, he didn't fully understand the theory or what was actually happening, um, or what the implications of his experiments actually were. So his assistant, however, Michael Faraday, who is also a big player in physics, um, he was he could develop theories and at, and show and sort of understand what was actually happening in all these electrolysis processes. So he created two laws of electrolysis. So the first law is basically that the mass of a substance formed at an electrode during electrolysis. So the mass of the the formate of the formed substance is proportional to the quantity of electricity that was passed through the electrolytic cell. So what that's saying is if you put more electricity into the cell, then you will get more stuff forming on the electrode. Okay? And that makes sense because you're supplying more electrons, so more of the ions can come out of solution, and so more of it can form on the electrode. So that makes perfect sense physically. Okay? Second law states that the mass produced per unit quantity of electricity are in the same ratio as their atomic weights for sets of elements with the same valency. Okay, so what that means is that the mass of the, the substance that you form, um, say with one, amp uh, one coulomb of electricity, of charge, then the ratio of that weight compared to something else, so let's say we form sodium, and then we form lithium with the same amount of electricity. The ratio of that of the weight of those products is equal to the ratio of the weights of their molecular weights, um, and all that means is that you know f the charge influences only one atom at a time, so one electron will influence one atom, or two electrons will influence one atom. So obviously, if you put the same amount of electricity in, the amount of weight will be different because sodium has a much higher molecular weight than, say. Lithium, so the ratio will be the same there. Okay, so there's no need to like to worry too much about the you know what's happening here, but you do need to know that this law is just you know conservation of mass essentially. Okay, so that concludes our lesson on these four scientists and the historical development of redox reactions. So we've looked at uh, Galvani, Volta, Davy, and Faraday, and how they contributed to our combined or current knowledge of electrolysis uh, and as well redox reactions. So, question 11. Identify a scientific unit used in honor of one of these scientists. So, there's a scientific unit, uh, an SI unit, so to speak, named after one of these people, and it should be pretty clear which one it is. Um, so, if you've ever used a battery, you'll know it's like 1.5 volts. Um, to be honest, I've never actually looked. <laughs> I've never looked at a battery like that because I always, you know, tried to fit the battery into whatever size that you needed to. So I never needed to know the voltage. But as I got into university, yeah, um, the volt became more and more important. So obviously, the unit is the volt, which is a unit of potential difference. Um, so it's the unit of voltage, electrical voltage, and so it's named after. Alessandro Volta for his creation of the Gav of the Volta's pile and the Galvanic cell. So briefly describe Galvani's work in investigating the effects of static electricity on muscle contraction. So Galvani studied the effect of static electricity on the contraction of muscles in dissected frog legs. He found that the muscles contracted when the frog was hung from a brass hook in contact with an iron wire. So you'd have an iron wire and then a brass hook connected to it, and then you hang the frog leg from that, and you'd notice there's a twitching because of the electrical current produced when the iron and the brass are in contact with one another. Outline one example of Volta's work which illustrates the effect of technology on the de development of chemistry. Okay? So Volta's experiments led to the use of electrical current. Because he could, you could now generate this direct electrical current, or DC current, or DC electricity, you could then 
do a lot more with uh, electrolysis. So until a steady electric current was available, it was not possible to decompose compounds containing active metals. So for instance, if I had sodium chloride solution, like a beaker of it, until the development of direct current, I had no way of taking out the sodium from that solution. I would always get, I could, I could try dehydrating the solution, so evaporating all the water, but I'd still only get sodium chloride crystals. Whereas now, with this electrical current that I can develop from this galvanic cell, I can actually isolate sodium metal, uh, which was previously unheard of. So NaCl experiments using electricity de to decompose compounds led to the discovery of active metals and improvements in the classification of substances as elements and compounds. So for instance, water, like I mentioned, if you you know, if you would try to do it any other way other than electricity, you would just get steam or ice, okay? You couldn't, you couldn't decompose water into anything else. Whereas now with the development of electricity, we could actually split the water into hydrogen and oxygen, and that proves that the, that the water molecule is actually not an element, it's, an, it's a compound, okay? So that's how Volta's work has, you know, assisted the development of chemistry because from that, it opened a whole bunch of doors for the classif classification of, of compounds, as well as isolating um, elements that previously could not have been isolated. So Davy contributed to science by isolating new chemicals. Explain why active metals such as sodium and potassium were not isolated earlier. So that's a similar question. They're very active metals, that's the first thing. They have very little attraction for their outer shell electrons and are strong reductants. So they cause reduction to happen very readily and they don't really want to keep that outside electron because it means that they're not stable. Therefore, the only, therefore they only occur naturally as compounds and a lot of energy is needed to separate them from compounds, right? Because they want to get rid of that electron so they form compounds with other things. So they can't be extracted by using heat, so they don't you know, if you heat sodium chloride, you just get molten sodium chloride. You never quite get back to sodium metal. So electrical energy is needed, and current electricity was not discovered earlier. So we didn't have direct current, so, you know, we couldn't do much. We couldn't get a stable current. I mean, we had the Van de Graaff generator, which kind of produced a burst, um, and then kind of died out. So analyze the impact of the work of these four scientists on our understanding of electron transfer reactions. So Galvani and Volta developed galvanic cells, while Davy and Faraday developed electrolytic cells. So one, so half of them developed electricity producing cells, while the other half used that electricity to produce other chemicals in, through, electro, through electrolysis. So Galvani's study pr provided the impetus, so that it you know, sort of motivated Volta's work to create his theory that electric electricity will flow when different metals come into contact, and later the development of his voltaic pile. So, while Gavani didn't get it right, it provided motivation and a starting point to work from, which Volta then took to producing his voltaic pile. Although animal electricity was found to be a real effect many years later, through our nervous system, so our nervous system has electricity running through it. His experiments did not themselves increase our understanding of electron transfer. So he didn't know what was going on, he just found this, um, he just proved that it happened, but he didn't know why. Whereas Volta's explanations were crucial to understanding what is actually happening when you combine different metals. So Davy was a great scientist, but Faraday was a great theorist. So Davy used electron transfer reactions to actually do things in chemistry, but Faraday actually explained how these electron transfer reactions worked and how to predict the outcome of future experiments. The work of Volta was crucial to aiding our understanding of electron transfer reactions, both because of his theoretical and practical developments. Davy and Faraday both used the development of Volta's pile to aid their understanding of electron transfer reactions through electrolysis. So 
Galvani, while he didn't really do anything uh, for electron transfer, he started the whole... Um, so he basically opened the door for this branch of research. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on the historical development of redox reactions. So we've looked at Galvani, Volta, Davy, and Faraday. And we looked at how they contributed to the greater understanding of redox reactions. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.